Thank you. I appreciate the opportunity to present this. Uh, on my literature search, I believe this is the first described endoscopic guided gastrojejunostomy formation, although the procedure is very similar to EDGE, where you create a gastrogastric fistula for ERCP after gastric bypass. Uh, but uh, this is what we've done at West Virginia University. Uh, please uh, play the video. Uh, I've got no relevant disclosures. This is a uh, patient. Uh, who's 63, year old, 63 years old, who had open ruin y gastric bypass surgery uh, over 15 years ago uh, at another institution. Uh, she had chronic NSAID use uh, for osteoarthritis, which caused uh, recurrent marginal ulcers and chronic fibrosis. She presented to an outside hospital emergency department with dysphagia and vomiting. Uh, they did an upper GI contrast study there, and you can see that there's a dilated esophagus. Uh, even after an hour of contrast uh, being ingested, uh, absolutely no contrast uh, emptied the gastric pouch, and this was a complete occlusion or obliteration uh, of the gastrojejunostomy. She was transferred to our facility for definitive care. She had a BMI of 21. Her albumin was 1.3. Uh, she'd had multiple midline laparotomy incisions for open bypass and then subsequent ventral hernias, uh, and uh, in general, she was malnourished. Uh, we did an upper endoscopy and took a look. Uh, we couldn't find an orifice to pass a small uh, scope or wire. Um, you know, we saw some old surgical scape, uh, staples and fibrosis, but complete obliteration uh, of the gastrojejunostomy, uh, which correlated with what the uh, radiographic images showed. Uh, here's, uh, again, looking at that. We took a linear uh, echo endoscope uh, and essentially found uh, the jejunum by peristalsis there. Uh, we took a 19-gauge needle and passed it uh, underneath the ultrasound guidance into the uh, jejunum. See a needle insertion right there being advanced. Uh, once the needle cannulated the jejunum, uh, then we passed contrast uh, through the 19-gauge needle, and these are fluoroscopic images. Uh, to verify that we had accessed the lumen of the jejunum, and you can see opacification of the jejunum. Uh, after needle uh, cannulation. Uh, we took a, a 0.035 inch uh, J wire and uh, fed it uh, through the 19 gauge needle uh, underneath uh, fluoroscopic guidance uh, and confirmed that it was going into the um, jejunum. Uh, there was a slight redundancy or coiling of the uh, wire there, uh, but we were able to advance it significantly. Once we uh, established uh, access uh, into the jejunum, uh, and uh, then next, uh, we used a uh, through-the-scope uh, endoscopic um, balloon dilator. Uh, and uh, the next set of images will show the uh, uh, balloon uh, catheter being advanced over the J-wire. We dilated the track up to 10 millimeters uh, to establish a more uh, open luminal uh, access. Uh, and then we took a uh, 20 millimeter uh, by uh, six centimeter through the scope uh, stent, a uh, fully covered stent, uh, and under fluoroscopic guidance, uh, we advanced it and positioned the stent as such that the uh, center of the stent was positioned over the newly formed uh, gastrojejunostomy. Uh, here is stent deployment. Uh, we deployed the stent uh, very cautiously and slowly to prevent any kind of stent movement so that we could line it up uh, so that it was uh, dead center on the gastrojejunostomy. This is uh, final deployment of the stent, and you can see the proximal flange uh, completely opened up. Uh, this is a fully covered stent. Wire was removed, and then we went back down with the tandem catheter uh, to inject uh, contrast through the stent uh, to confirm uh, that we had uh, created a sealed uh, anastomosis with no leak. Uh, this is injection of contrast uh, into the newly formed gastrojejunostomy through the stent. You can see a pinch at the stent at the site of the gastrojejunostomy. Uh, you know, patency of the stent, and then the uh, jejunum filling with contrast and air uh, to show patency of the anastomosis. We then took a 15 French endoscope and transversed the stent to confirm uh, that uh, we had uh, properly accessed the jejunum. 
Uh, she did very well uh, after the procedure. Uh, we were able to advance her uh, to a soft diet within 48 hours and she was discharged home. Um, she's about six months out from the procedure. We've uh, exchanged the stent out a few times. Uh, her albumin's greatly improved. Uh, she's put on a significant amount of weight uh, and is doing well. Uh, we think for a select group of people that have obliterated the gastrojejunostomy uh, that this procedure uh, could reestablish endoscopic uh, gastrojejunostomy uh, with avoiding the uh, morbidity that may be associated with surgical treatment, especially in patients uh, that uh, are at higher risk for conversion to laparotomy. Um, and again, uh, when I do a literature search, I haven't seen gastrojejunostomy formation uh, endoscopically, so I believe this is a new described procedure, and we're calling it the egg procedure. Thank you. I appreciate it.